Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie is at Dawn. I remain your host, Chad, if you're a 3 and this remains Natalie's at Dawn, which is currently doing the June 1v1 2016 tournament. June 2016 1v1 tournament. And we are in to the bracket stage. Or Phyllis is actually taking it from Mikens. What ended up happening is that the standings were messed around a bit so that buys count for half rather than counting full because Dancer and Crudo were basically way too overscored because they basically didn't do anything except for the... Like, Dancer played once. Dancer did something. Crudo, as far as I can tell... Actually, Dancer played one for Crudo, actually. But otherwise, they didn't really... They're at the bottom, so they were counting for more than they should have. And I think also North Chilean G being dropped down because of the buy meant that there were fewer tied opponents and then Orphelius ended up winning the tiebreaker because of Bookholtz and that ended up getting them into the top four. So now we have Akinem and Google Frog, and we also have Snuggle Base versus Orphelius. And we're going to be watching Akinem versus Google Frog, which will be in one of these rooms. Anyway. Apparently something has gone weird with the brackets? I, I don't know. Nope. Akinem, Google Frog, Snuggle Base, Orphelius. I don't see what happened. Maybe they were not swapped before? I don't know. Anyway, the point is, we are going to be watching Akinem and Google Frog, because I haven't really seen Akinem or Google Frog in a while. But we'll see, I guess, once the game starts proper. But what is... Okay, are we, who are we waiting for here? I'm kind of curious. Okay, Google Frog's here. Akinem's here. Perfect. We are about to go. We can actually get this game started. And we'll be on Dune Patrol. That's the map. I'm guessing it's loser picks. But I don't know. We'll find out. So yeah, winner semifinals. So right now... I'd say that, I mean, statistically, Aquanim is the favorite to win this one, but then again, did Aquanim fight Google Frog? Yes, and Aquanim actually won. All right, so I guess that works. So, statistically speaking, Aquanim is definitely favored to win. However, in terms of Elo, it seems a bit more up in the air. So I'm curious how this is all going to play out, because this does seem like it's kind of an Aquanim's favor, which I don't know if I normally expect. So Akinem over to the northwest, probably going to go... Oh, what are they going to go for? Could be Hovercraft, could be Amphib, who knows? And Google Frog in the southeast. Not even placed down where they're going to go yet. Okay, Amphib... Okay, no, 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 Shield Bot for Aquanem, interesting. And apparently Aquanem going for a Sport Commander. While Google Frog is still undecided, apparently. Google Frog going for... Strike Commander? Oh, really? That's what the strike commander looks like? I thought that was support commander. No, that's the support commander. Okay, so a support commander from Google Frog and Hovercraft compared to shields for Aquanim. Both players being, well, support commander, so a bit more economical. Both players, however, are starting out with raiders, so relatively standard start. Only one dagger, so a bit at light scouting for Google Frog. Aquanim, on the other hand, going for a couple of bandits, so they want to deal a bit more damage. I'm just surprised to see shields on this map. Like, because of the water in the map, as we can see right now, the dagger using that water effectively, the way this map is laid out, it's usually to your advantage to go Amphib or Hover. Generally speaking, you don't see a lot of people go... I mean, sometimes you do see Shields or Light Vehicles or Cloaky, but I don't know as if it's a great idea. I feel like it's not the best idea. I feel like there's some things that just 
don't handle things. It's just this lake makes it hard for anything that's not able to traverse it quickly to handle all situations. As it is, Google Frog can retreat to that lake if need be. Like, into the lake, there's nothing that Aquanim can do. But at the same time, Aquanim does have a stronger force for direct raiding. Daggers don't really live that long, and they have, I mean, they three shot bandits is 110 each. So, right now, the bandits are actually at a bit of an advantage. And th that's the thing with daggers, is that basically, as soon as they get into a position where they're actually having to fight, they tend to fall quickly. They're they are hit and run forces. That's what they do. So as long as Akinem can keep a strong defensive position, Google Frog won't be able to eat... Oh, darn it. Sorry. Let's start that over again. Akinem's going for Shield Blood Factory. Google Frog's going for Hovercraft Factory. This happens once a tournament. I'm sorry. Actually, it didn't happen last tournament. I'm kind of embarrassed it's happening this tournament because normally I've been good about making sure to switch back to the actual game. Sorry about that. But yeah, Google Frog over Shield Butts. Nothing really missed so far because, like, one bandit died. However, at this point, Google Frog actually starting to cause trouble. A bit of trouble. These daggers doing some work. But yeah, my earlier comments, though, definitely, definitely hold. It's really hard for the daggers to do any real fighting. And I don't see Google Frog going for scalpels, surprisingly. They are expanding out there, trying to at least keep enough pressure on Aquinum so that expansions are relatively unhindered. But Aquanim at the same time doesn't seem to be too concerned. They're just expanding themselves. The difference being that Google Frog seems to be a bit more focused on having that worker doing the job. Whereas... Wait, that convict... Oh, shoot! That convict died! Aquanim lost the convict to the north. That's a huge blow. And Aquanim looks like they're trying to make up for it by getting a lot more production in their factory. Google Frog does not have the production in the factory. They have the expansion. They don't have the production from the income. So I think Akram is going to try to basically go for a bit of a harassment attack. Or at least that or just push. Establish more territory. And then continue to expand. Because otherwise I don't see why the caretaker is being used when Akram doesn't have a huge amount of money in the bank and doesn't have a massive income. But yeah, that's... That's a bit unfortunate for Aquinum, but I mean, I don't know. It's not a big deal yet. Aquinum has a lot of room to build up. They have a lot of room to expand. They're not going to be in too much trouble yet. It's just Google Frog is taking expansions without really a whole lot of opposition. And part of it is that we are seeing a shift to Outlaws to deal with the daggers more efficiently. And I can kind of see why you do that. Although Outlaws take about... I think seven shots? Yeah, the seven shot by daggers. Exactly seven. No, no, not exactly seven shots. I'm thinking 150. No, it's ten shots. It takes ten shots to kill them. So the outlaws are actually really effective. The problem is just that there's... A, there's getting a, to be a large number of daggers, and now we have scalpels coming in. And the scalpels are being... Well, they're soon to be a pain in the butt. They're going to be a real problem for the outlaws. Surprisingly, no rogues coming in to help deal with the scalpels. Or the daggers, rather. So I don't really know how this is going to handle anything. I mean, how Akram is going to be able to handle this, honestly. They have got nothing, really, to deal with this. Because the scalpels will get the bandits. The bandits do not move fast enough to dodge the missiles. The Outlaws will obviously be hit by the Scalpels, because the Outlaws are even slower. And that's already one down. But no particular switch, still Banded Outlaw. No Thugs to protect against the missiles, no... Which admittedly are, are pretty close to useless against the Gauss shots of the Daggers, so take that. And Google Frog just using all that pressure to continue to grab territory. Staking out the Northwest. Expanding to the south, sorry, northeast, expanding to the southwest. This is proving to be a major problem for Aquinum right now. Being forced back in the corner. I think Aquinum might be trying to, although I don't see any roaches, but I suspect Aquinum may at some point try to basically lure Google Frog in and then wipe out all their army in one go. But there are no roaches, so I have no idea how Aquinum would plan to do that. It's just that Aquinum at this point is kind of regrouping. They're falling back. 
they're making sure to be at least somewhat more defensive. I guess that's the only thing that comes to mind. Because at the moment, Aquinum is behind militarily, behind economically, has a territory disadvantage, does have a bit of raiding going on at least. That is good. We have some way of getting back in here. And the daggers that staked out the northeast were killed or driven away. Part, some of them were killed. Some of them were, are over here. So Aquinum could take the northeast right now. And it looks like they are planning... Yeah, they are actually getting some turrets up to try to take that. Southwest is not being taken anytime soon. And this convict, for some reason, not building the metal extractor... Okay, that's not a super valuable metal extractor, but it's still metal. It's not the worst idea in the world. But yeah, at this point, it's entirely Google Frog taking the southwest. And the northeast, it's disputed, but I think that Aquanim is going to take it. They have a bunch of bandits coming out here. It's going to be able to wipe out the Defender, wipe out the Quill, possibly even raid into the western, or sorry, the eastern expansion. I get my east and west confused all the time. I don't know why that is. But yeah, raid into the eastern expansion... And one Lotus is not enough. That Lotus is basically nothing. That's paper. And the bandits are moving in, and they will be able to tear this apart. And Aquanim realizing, yep, one Lotus is not a threat. Moving in. Banshees, however, moving in as well. Both Aquanim and Goofrog switching over to gunships. Aquanim, however, has not built anything with it yet. Not even got the factory up yet. Whereas Goofrog, Rapiers, and Banshees are both up. And over to the western side of the map, Goofrog counterattacking. But losing a lot of scalpels in the process. No big roach attacks or anything, but still the scalpel's going down. And that is a blow. That is not something that Google Frog wants to have happen. Acronym, I think being relatively effective there, at least to an extent. But there is going to need to be a follow-up force because Google Frog going to go for a counterattack. Google Frog is definitely going to go for a counterattack. No reason not to. The Northeast is pretty much taken, though. Acronym's basically taken that. But the Southwest, yeah, there we go. That's the counterattack right there. And I don't see any bandits coming in to deal with that. Aquanum just trying to find raiding spots. Trying to find any vulnerable location in Google Frog's line to be able to take that down. And Google Frog actually responding to the pressure, moving the scalpels back and regrouping them to attack the center rather than harassing the western side of the map, which is to Aquanum's advantage, I think, seeing as the Racketeers are right there. So the Racketeers can stun up the scalpels. And also it means that Akinum doesn't have to worry about protecting the western side of the map right now. The earlier attack did drive them off successfully. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like the Racketeers are actually going to be doing all that much good, so it's going to come down possibly to Banshees, possibly to other air units. Nothing on the ground really here to get rid of the Scalpels. It would take a lot of Bandits to do that. And the Banshee's not really going for it either, so I'm not really sure what is the goal here. What's the If the Banshees are trying to do anything right now, but Certainly, it's not going well. Like, the Banshees are, are trying. They're doing their best. But I don't know. I feel like they're not able to do as much as they really need to. There's not very many of them. And the Daggers are a threat. The Scalpels are kind of a threat. All this stuff is kind of a threat. And it looks like Goo Frog is going to be taking this. I think Aquadim being forced back to the main base. Yeah, throwing in the towel. That's GG. That is game, and I'm curious what the excess... Oh, no one excessed. That's good. Metal income, yeah. Google Frog ahead economically the entire game. That just did the trick. I mean, that early expansion over to the eastern side of the map, that gave Google Frog an opening economic advantage that never really went away. And Aquanim just kind of got intimidated by the pressure. The pressure daggers really did the trick, just keeping Aquanim from expanding as fast as they'd like to, also killing that convict. Holy crap, killing that convict meant that this expansion was slower and possibly over here. And the southwest, no chance of taking that. So, good kill on the convict. Bit surprised that Akuna didn't go for that. I mean, they went for the caretaker and I guess for additional army. And we did see the bandits coming up. Although, even then, units built, Google Frog still wins there. So, it really didn't help too much, sadly. Anyway, that was game one. So, we're going to be moving on to game two. Not sure how this is going to go. Because I don't know how the map rules are worded. I, I don't know what the map rules are. I, I think it's loser picks, because it's usually loser picks. But, I don't know. That's just my guess. I have no idea what's going on with that. 
I can only assume it's loser picks. At any rate. <sighs> yep, it is. So Aquanim's gonna be choosing the map for game two. Oh wait, I'm gonna go to this. That's where I wanna be. Game two, which will be Hmm, knowing Aquanim Maybe Ravaged? Maybe I don't think the Oh, Altier Crossing. Okay, yeah, wow. Alright then. Altier Crossing it is. Not quite what I expected, but okay. That makes sense, though. Anyway, so yeah, we have... Game two will be starting up pretty soon. And I guess I guess Aquan is just trying to figure out what they can do with shields. But I'm guessing we're probably going to be seeing if Google Frog loses, probably gonna be seeing CCR. I'm almost certain we're gonna see Comic Catcher. Because I think Google Frog just figures they'd be able to win on that. I mean, I don't really know if they'd win the macro game, but they were winning the macro game on Doom Patrol, so it's a reasonable assumption. And we are about to start. It's just... Hmm. Man, this is going to be tricky. Google Frog... Up one game, so it's definitely just a matter of if they can win the RPS aspect of the smaller map. Like, if Aquanim successfully cheeses out Google Frog, then, yeah, it's going to be game three. If not, then we will probably just see the next round, I guess. I don't even know how this is going. It looks like right now it's still ongoing for the other game. I have no idea how that other game is going. It's... Looks like it's on to game two. Not sure who's won so far, but it looks like the match between Snuggle Base and Orphilius has gone on to game two. So whoever wins that, I guess, will possibly make it game three. But anyway, Akinem and Google Frog. Akinem going for Shieldbot. Again, they clearly like their Shieldbots. Google Frog also going for Shieldbot. And did they get it on top of that? I think they did. Oops. Ah. Nope. There's just enough space. Very close, but not too close. And early convict, early reclaim, while Aquanim going for early bandit for early harassment. And derp, okay, so dirtbag bandit from Google Frog. So Google Frog really once again trying to go for the macro game, trying to go for the economy, and I guess also trying to distract the bandits with the dirtbag because that's what dirtbags do. Although admittedly that one kind of put the bandits into a better position for flanking. Because now they're going to flank from the north, and Google Frog's forces are... Actually, I guess they're filing in single file. I don't know. It seems like it's probably irrelevant, honestly. Two bandits versus two bandits is much too small to be talking about, talking about where things are relative to each other, or lines or anything. Like, lines of forces. It's just not really relevant. But what is relevant is Akram's going for... They're going for the commander push from the looks of it. They're not going for the standard RAR push, though. They're not going for Warriors or Thugs. They're not going for Massive Assault Force. They are upgrading their commander and moving forward, so they're clearly trying to be a little bit more aggressive. But they're also trying to be safe about it. Oh, wait. CCR's not in the tournament map pool. Okay, never mind. Google Frog will not pick CCR because that's not an option. At any rate, we'll see if that's even relevant, though, because... Right now, the game's pretty even. Aquanim's actually slightly ahead, medal-wise, thanks to Reclaim. And really taking advantage of that, too. Like, Aquanim is actually... Man, they're pushing that production. They're... Pfft, Starlight? That's a miss. That, they didn't mean to do that. I'm guessing Google Frog probably ignored that. I don't know if that's actually universal, that big red circle on the minimap. 
But yeah, that... That, I've never seen someone accidentally do that. They must have been trying to build radar and accidentally hit the starlight button, because it's, I guess, close? I think it's like VC or something? No. VFVG? VH. Yeah, I don't know what they were trying to do. What else is on H? There's not only power structures on H. Defensive structures on H are... There's none. Strider Hub is the only other option, really, on H. So that was just a total misstep. I don't even know what happened. I'm curious. But that's fine. Aquan, I'm going for the Rocket Commander. Heavy Commander is pushing forward. I still think this is a safer thing than a lot of the stuff that, say, RAR will do, where it's straight push and nothing else. Aquanum clearly is trying to make sure there's something behind it, that there's defenses to fall back to, like it's fire bases, and, of course, expansions on top of that. So that does work. Or should hopefully work a bit better. And roaches as well. Ooh, this is risky. Those roaches got really close to Aquanum's commander. Google Frog clearly not aware of that, but... Yeah, roaches as well. So making it even harder for Google Frog to attack if they wanted to, and making it easier for Akinum to retreat if they need to. And Akinum staking on the north side as well with a couple bandits hidden behind a tree. That's clever since default camera angle would not spot them. Of course, that's only default camera angle. But I'm fairly certain that Google Frog does not tilt their camera. Like, they don't do this at all, which would totally reveal it. There are some players who do. Ow, the roach went off. Never mind. Missed that. There are some players who do. Google Frog's not one of them as far as I can tell from their, their FP bot efforts. Oh, got rid of the convict. Nice. Good kill. I mean, really, that's that's what you want to get rid of on this map. Because convicts, especially in the mid to late game, they're just going to reclaim everything, both from you and from the map. And that's going to be a problem. It's going to be a huge problem. At the same time, Google Frog over to the northwest just to harass that out. Because why let that happen for free? That's always the thing. That's always the theme. Never let your opponent get away with doing stuff for free. It's a great way to lose the game. And Google Frog not letting that happen. Although that means that Aquanum did let Google Frog destroy that expansion for free. But at this point, I don't know if Google Frog is that concerned. I mean, obviously they did their job. Aquanum might be more concerned. But at the same time, Aquanum's just going to rebuild so and reclaim. So I'm not sure how much Aquanum is worried about that. But Google Frog able to reclaim the center. Aquanum with Rocket Launcher and more range. What is their range right now? Their range is 494 Elmos, which is, I believe, one and a half times that of a Rocco. So the range is getting pretty far up there. I mean, it's still just the commander. That's not great. And the Roche is all gone, so there's no easy retreat path. And the Northwest is still being heavily pressured, so Google Frog can just take that, no problem. And Akinem throws in the towel. Game two, very rapid. Google Frog taking it. So Akinem goes down to losers. Google Frog winning 2-0. Now I'm kind of curious what's happening in the other match, because that other match is... Oh, did it also go 2-0? I don't know. Orf won game one. Oh, that was game one. Okay, well, we might as well go watch that, too. I mean, I don't know what to really say about this match. It just sort of happened. So, yeah, moving on. I'll go to game two in a sec. So, or the other game in game two. So, stay tuned for that. It'll be up in, like, a couple seconds. Actually, I'll just play the intro again. <laughs> 